Hello everyone, this is Shiva Shankar from Safety Hunt again with a new video. In this video, I am going to explain about risk, risk assessment and associated risk matrix. In everyday life, we will have some kind of risk, it's unavoidable. So what is this risk actually? Risk is a combination of likelihood and consequences. More precisely, risk is actually how likely a person will get affected to the hazards. So what is risk assessment then? Risk assessment is actually a tool which finds out what kind of hazards will happen before doing the activity first of all and uh, associated control measures and who will be responsible for implementing those control measures. It's a tool which analyzes these kind of things. It's uh, important uh, to have risk assessment ready before starting the project. It's widely used uh, in oil and gas process industries, construction industries and everywhere nowadays because nobody wants to take any chances with life, uh, more importantly. And uh, the risk assessment got many names. Uh, somewhere it will, it call, it's called TRA, Task Risk Assessment, and somewhere it's called Hira Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment. Somewhere it's called uh, JSA. But the basic thing is the concepts behind this is same, or more or less is same. So let's go and uh, see an example of risk assessment and how it looks like. So I have a small risk assessment model for you. If you see here, this is the main item captured in the risk assessment. So first of all, in a project, what activity we are going to do? So activity like uh, scaffolding, lifting, transportation of material, blasting, uh, welding, cutting, raining, this kind of activity should be listed here and uh, activities hazard is our main motto to find out so how we do the risk assessment and how we find the hazard before taking out the risk assessment we need to have method statement a method statement we all know that it's a step by step procedure which discusses about how the activity is going to be done that uh, should be approved first of all by having that in reference and having a site visit we can go ahead for making this risk assessment so once we identify the hazard uh, we need to have the controls existing controls existing control is that the control measure it's already in place no need to implement so that kind of control for example uh, if the, there is activity is a uh, hot work and uh, the hazard is a presence of gas you know if uh, hot work welding cutting grinding in presence of gas it will be a major explosion and fire may take place so in that case we need to have what is that existing control there will be a fixed gas detectors in place so that will be an existing control and we have to have a risk level that uh, i will talk about uh, later uh, with an ex example so next uh, is mitigation mitigation is what we need to implement more which is not at all existing so for example in a welding we have to have fire extinguisher charged fire hose fire watchers and a fire booths and uh, we need to have simop activity in place like uh, uh, spading and uh, no gas venting should be done in the vicinity of the hot work in oil and gas industries and the residual risk the residual risk and uh, there is an initial risk level uh, after implementing the mitigation control, the remaining risk is known as the residual risk and it should be alarm and that means as low as reasonably practicable and more important responsible person. Responsible person is those guys who will be responsible for implementing those control measures and my friend this is an important uh, section in the task risk assessment because if anything goes wrong in the activity definitely this guy who is responsible for it will get caught no no one can get away with it so let's take a look at how a risk matrix will look like this is a standard risk matrix which i have here and nowadays there are many kind of risk matrix in place so uh, those uh, it's depend upon the companies and the clients uh, somewhere you can see uh, in the consequence it will cover environmental somewhere in the LTI lost time injuries and uh, uh, in likelihood section you can see ones in hundred ones in ten ones in millions ones in thousands this this is uh, different for different clients it's uh, depend upon them but the basic concept is same for all so here I have a uh, risk matrix in place. So this dotted section is 
uh, low risk and this middle empty section is a medium risk and uh, this uh, shaded section is a high risk so this side i have a likelihood and uh, here it's a consequence it ranges from low to high and here it's low to high so let's take um, examples and we will correlate that example with this uh, risk matrix for example i have a uh, process industries and i have lifting activities in place so this lifting activity is actually going to be taken going to be taking place over a live pipelines i mean the process pipeline which uh, let's say battery limit in uh, oil and gas industry which is very important in a battery limit we all know there will be ngl will be passing through the process train so this uh, over that we have to have uh, some kind of lifting let's say we have to take uh, spading uh, over this process line so what can go wrong here we can see first case is we can say the crane is good it has a certificate in place it maintenance record in place and uh, the web slings uh, chain blocks spreader bars everything has a certificate and looks good so the crane is good and the associated lifting equipments are good so, but and the pipeline in oil and gas we know that the pipeline has to be secured a double layer scaffolding should be made over the live pipelines uh, process pipelines so if uh, the pipeline is uh, secured with double layer scaffolding with the crane is very good definitely we have low uh, low risk so in this case we will have this uh, low likelihood okay low chances of hazard and the consequence is also low because the pipeline is already secure so what we will do it comes here and it's here so we the residual risk is low still so let's see the next case next case the crane is good it has got all maintenance certificates certified and looks good and web slings everything is um, good and uh, certified but the pipeline isn't secured so what will happen at that time the risk is high because uh, consequence will be more if anything goes wrong the pipe it may hit the pipeline and uh, it ha may have the release of product or cargo inside so at that time what we what will happen so see here it is still high this consequence is high but uh, this likelihood is low it's meeting here see so we are having a medium risk the residual risk is medium here let's see the next case the next case is uh, crane is poor i mean it looks damages and uh, hydraulic oil is leaking uncertified crane uncertified uh, web slings the web slings are damaged and uh, teared off and uh, everything looks ugly so what happens in that case but the pipeline is secure so even if anything goes wrong the pipeline is still secured because the consequence will be low because we have a secured pipeline so what happens the consequence is low but the risk here likelihood will be high because it is uncertified screen so still we have a medium risk as a residual risk so the fourth case is poor crane as well as unsecured pipe so both are very dangerous because the crane has got no certificates but the pipeline is also not secured with double layer scaffold so what will happens the consequence is also high and the likelihood is also high so both will meet here because high likelihood and high consequence so both will meet here so these are the four scenarios and uh, here we have see the shaded is high risk so now you can see that all the four scenarios which is a uh, uh, high risk and a uh, low risk this is uh, how a um, risk matrix uh, will be done and this is how it will be evaluated let's uh, take a, another look at another example for example uh, construction workers are working nearby a road uh, actually in first case uh, it's not a busy road let's consider it's not a busy road and uh, only two wheelers are passing by uh, cycles or small carts or something of that kind uh, and uh, the road is not busy you may have uh, 15 minutes once there will be a vehicle pass by so what will happen there will be a consequence and uh, definitely there will be a hazard but how we can evaluate here the chances i mean this uh, likelihood will be low and uh, still if it gets 
uh, if we get hit uh, by car or two wheeler definitely we will have a impact that will be a minor so it will meet here so low likelihood and the low consequence okay in the second case if uh, the road is busy I mean we will have a bicycle or two wheeler or cart uh, uh, very oftenly oftenly it's moving here and there so at that time what happens consequence will be still low but the probability I mean this likelihood will become increased so still what consequence is uh, low but the likelihood is high it will meet here so it's medium risk so but if in case what happens with a big truck or a, a buses lorries uh, are going here and there or cars so it, if it is not a busy road definitely the consequence will be high but the likelihood will be still low because uh, it's not a busy road uh, very uh, rarely the vehicle may pass here and there so what happens the likelihood will be still low but uh, the consequence is high because it's a big truck so if we get hit definitely we'll have a fatality here so it will come in medium risk in the fourth case we will have a busy road with heavy trucks and moving on here and there and uh, what will happen at that time to those construction workers exposed exposed to it so definitely we will have a high consequence and high probability so see if it it will meet here high consequence and high likelihood so we have a shaded region which is a high risk so definitely this uh, risk matrix is an important tools to evaluate the risk level and uh, anyhow my friend uh, the initial risk uh, might be whatever but the residual sh risk should be as low as reasonably practicable which uh, should uh, the residual risk shows uh, should not uh, affect any people for example we know here that uh, we have some kind of hazard anyhow like uh, low or uh, high but what if the construction workers are uh, working inside a barrier what if the traffic is diverted so at that case we will have a negligible you know accidents here so there will be no chance because there is no traffic movement around the workplace because it's already been diverted with flagman or signboards in place uh, so any of that kind so definitely if we implement uh, these uh, risk matrix and risk assessments in place definitely we can save uh, n number of people so even in uh, oil and gas process industries uh, definitely uh, without this uh, fatalities and uh, accidents may happen very uh, you know frequently so i suggest you all to implement this uh, risk assessment tools um, in your industries uh, for low accidents and uh, negligible accidents so thank you for which watching this video my friend if you have any clarifications in this video please comment me down i'll be happy to explain you back uh, and if you haven't subscribed so far please subscribe it for my latest and updated videos thanks for watching it thank you